Authorized push payment, that is APP fraud losses, are expected to climb to $612 million in India by 2026 from $330 million in 2021, a record CAGR of 13.15%, according to Scamsco, a new report by ACI Worldwide and Global Data. Hello and welcome to VAR India News R. APP fraud scams involve fraudsters tricking their victims into willingly making large bank transfers to them. In many cases, this happens via social engineering across social media networks or via telephone. The growth of real-time payments has given rise to this new type of fraud, which in many markets is growing at a much faster rate than card frauds. Despite educational and preventive mechanisms adopted by banks, stories of victims falling to APP scams continue to be an issue. While there is an increasing awareness of these scams, fraudsters are also evolving their modus operandi. In such a scenario, sufficient flexibility is needed by banks to dynamically define and update the rules that govern risks. Not only will this help in increasing the detection accuracy of such frauds, but also help in addressing them before they are carried out, remarked Ankur Saxena, country leader India and South Asia, ACI Worldwide. In 2022, one quarter, that is 25% of fraudulent transactions in India, are valued between Rs. 50,001 and Rs. 1 lakh, and a further 19% are valued between Rs. 20,001 and Rs. 50,000. Together, these ranges make up around 44% of the total instances of fraud in the country. Despite the rising concerns around fraudulent payments activities, almost a third of the victims in India continue to show high brand loyalty after they have been victims of APP scams and are more likely to choose to keep their accounts open, the report further revealed. Scamscope looks at the most prevalent types of APP scams in three geographies, that is India, US and the UK. According to the report, product, that is 37.8%, romance, that is 18.4%, and investment scams, that is 16.3%, are the most commonly reported APP scam across all three geographies markets. The report also provides recommendations for financial institutions to address APP frauds. Banks must get ahead of incoming regulatory changes and strengthen and optimize both processes and technologies in the fight against APP scams. There is a need for robust technology solutions for the collection of more and better customer data as behavioral data is key to tackling social engineering. Experts say although there are indications that banks are taking the necessary steps to combat the new fraud threat, they must not be complacent regarding these risks. Aside from the direct cost of fraud losses, the lack of regulatory protections around reimbursing consumers for APP fraud losses means there is a potential loss of trust and thus customers from APP fraud. Let's look into today's headlines in VAR India. Phone pay to acquire Zest money. Digital payments and financial services provider PhonePay is all set to acquire buy now pay later fintech startup Zest Pay at a $200 million to $300 million deal. This buyout will give PhonePay the access to an NBFC license. Zest Money will continue to operate as a separate entity with the Zest brand. 142 people arrested for phone spoofing service. A coordinated law enforcement has dismantled an online phone number spoofing service called iSpoof and arrested 142 individuals linked to the operation. The ultimate objective behind the social engineering scheme was to trick victims into revealing sensitive personal or financial information or alternatively transferring significant amounts of money for financial gain. Over 2 lakh potential victims are believed to be targeted through iSpoof in the UK alone. Adani Enterprises to raise India's biggest FPO to date. Adani Enterprises Board of Directors have approved a follow-on public offer of Rs 20,000 crores, the country's largest FPO. The face value of each share in the FPO would be Rs 1. The FPO would help fund Adani Enterprises' growth plans as the group looks to expand across categories. In an FPO, listed companies issue shares to the public to diversify their equity shareholding. New York restricts cryptocurrency mining in the state. New York is taking a first-in-the-nation step to tap the brakes on the spread of cryptocurrency mining under legislation of Governor Kathy Hochul. The measure comes amid growing scrutiny of the cryptocurrency industry, specifically concerned with the environmental aspects of crypto. 
The new law sets a two-year moratorium on new and renewed air permits for fossil fuel power plants used for energy-intensive proof-of-work cryptocurrency mining that records and secures transactions in Bitcoin and similar forms of digital money. Proof-of-work is the blockchain-based algorithm used by Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies. Government releases Rs 17,000 crores GST compensation for April to June. The central government has released Rs 17,000 crores to states as goods and services tax compensation for April to June, making the total amount given to states and union territories so far this financial year at Rs 1.16 lakh crores. The decision was taken to assist the states in managing their resources and ensuring that their programs, especially the expenditure on capital, is carried out successfully during the financial year. That's all for now. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to VAR India News Magazine. You can download the VAR India app from Google Play Store and Apple App Store for the latest news and updates. Stay tuned. Thank you.